So you've had your good time now playing Zero and suddenly you're starting to feel this itch to get into the actual card game or come back to the actual card game? Well don't worry, I got you covered. Alright, the video is finally here. Going from Zero to TCG, the transition of the year basically. So of course Vanguard Zero is really exciting, it's really cool that it came out and of course a lot of people are jumping on it, so many people are coming back, you know they used to play Vanguard in the past, a lot of people are getting into the franchise for the first time, you know it's the first time they encounter Vanguard but then you know they find out oh there's actually you know it's based on an actual card game and they start looking at the new stuff but they don't really get it you know there's like some rule differences and you know a lot of mechanics that don't exist in zero so in this video i'm going to be covering not only just those like mechanical and rule differences but also go through what's a good starting point where should you find your community how should you approach these things where do you get your cards all that stuff is going to be in this video and i'm also going to give you a bunch of pointers you know whether it's websites or other content creators where to find decks like all that stuff covered in this video Video. So first things first, what are the differences between Zero and the TCG? You know, I've actually done a video, I've done a video, but from a TCG player perspective explaining how Zero is different from the actual TCG. But now that there's a lot of people that started with Zero that want to get into the TCG, how is that different? So first things first, you know, there's quite a few things. So first things is that triggers are grade Zero. So in Zero you can assign triggers to your grade threes in any way you want. In the TCG, triggers have always been grade zero, and they're also the highest shield value. And that's another big difference is that, unlike zero in the normal TCG, you actually guard with cards. You basically, you know, you have your card, and it has like, you know, on the side, it'll have a little, like a, like a number on the side, which is the shield value. And basically when your opponent attacks, you know, just like in zero, when your opponent attacks your unit, you can guard with that card and basically add that defensive amount of power to your unit's attacking power. And then if it's more than the, the attacking unit, then you basically block it successfully. So that's just how it works. And so, of course, you know, for anyone that used to play the TCG, that's nothing new, but for the zero players, that might be something new. Then, uh, in terms of drive checks and damage checks, all your drive checks go to your hand. So when you check a card, you know, instead of going to the bottom or going to the drop zone, if it's trigger like in zero, all of it goes to your hand, no matter what. No matter if it's a trigger or normal unit, it always goes to your hand, and then your hand just gets bigger from attacking, of course. So then, you know, you want to always attack with your Vanguard for those drive checks because they go to your hand. And and then that gives you shield power to defend yourself the next turn when it goes to your opponent. Another important difference is that perfect guards uh, in zero, they activate after the drive checks, but in normal Vanguard, of course, you can perfect guard against anything, against rear guards and uh, the Vanguard, and of course, the trigger power can be distributed, you know, to the rear guards like in zero, but you can also give criticals to the rear guards. In, in zero, you can only give criticals to the Vanguard. But perfect guards in the normal TCG, they have to be activated before the drive check. So your opponent declares an attack with their Vanguard, you put the perfect guard down, pay the cost by discarding one card, and then they do the drive checks and put the triggers wherever they want. So that's another big difference. And then the other like big difference in terms of the base rules is that, of course, while in zero there's 40 cards, in the TCG there's 50, and there's 16 triggers as well instead of 13 like in zero. So more triggers but also bigger deck size so the chance of them coming out is more or less the same but keep in mind that instead of having just the only grade zero being your starter you have 16 plus one grade zeros uh so 16 triggers plus your starter and then you have grade ones twos and threes uh and of course you don't need to play 13 of each grade you know you can play most decks play for example like 12 grade ones or 14 grade ones and then like 10 or 12 uh grade twos and then like eight or like six or eight uh grade threes and stuff like that of course it depends on the deck some decks can go as low as four grade threes which is also completely possible so now we get on to the thing where you know the actual news you know the actual like changes to the rules the the mechanical changes and of course if you're already curious about it you've already googled looked around like what is standard what is premium i keep hearing these words all over the place whenever people talk about the tcg and so basically in 2018 um the Trading card game rebooted, and so basically they went, they finished up the G series, which is the second generation of Vanguard, and they basically said, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically redo everything, um, for, but from the perspective of the manga. So if you watch the original anime, it's different from the manga, and so they wanted to basically cover the manga's story in an anime format, and it like the anime itself turned out not that good in my opinion but you know that's a personal opinion but um they basically rebooted it and they basically said okay now we're gonna do two formats standard will be a format that uses cards that have come out since like may 2018 until now and so we don't know at the time of making this whether it's like a rotating format or anything but we've been playing with like standard has been playing with cards that have come out since may 2018 for the last like two years basically so 
Standard uses just new cards, basically, and it's always just that, and that's it. Premium, on the other hand, is, for example, if you're a zero player, if you, and if you want to play, let's say, buy the cards of your zero deck and play with it, you're technically playing premium, because premium is the game mode or the format where you can use all the cards that have ever come out together with the new ones. So, and that enables you to make really cool strategies where you basically use some of the old cards together with the new cards to make some really cool combos and interactions, and that's also very, very cool. But of course, premium takes all of the mechanics from the last nine years of Vanguard into it as well, which of course goes beyond just Limit Break. But let's cover what the formats are and what are the like big differences, big news in them that are so different from the base card game that is present in Zero. So the big mechanic that they brought into the card game with the reboot with, you know, standard was the imaginary gift mechanic. Now, if you look at any grade three, well, most grade threes that have come out ever since May 2018, you'll notice that just under like the grade and like the intercept slash like, well, twin drive rather uh, ability, there is a little like triangle thing that usually says force, protect or axel. And so basically they assigned all 24 clans to be part of one of those three. So for example, like gold paladin is an axel clan. Uh, whereas like Royal Paladin and Shadow Paladin are uh, Force clans, but then like Oracle Think Tank is a Protect clan. So every clan is assigned to that specific imaginary gift. You can't like change them or anything. It literally says on the card that you have to acquire this type of gift. But what is a gift? A imaginary gift is basically like a marker or like basically like a marker that either goes to your field or goes to your hand, depending on which type it is, right? So basically, um, let me just quickly explain which like which one is which, right? So and each gift marker go comes in two types. So for example, force. Force is meant to be the imaginary gift of like balance. So for example, it's both equal like enough oppressive and aggressive, but also enough to be somewhat defensive. So it's kind of like in the mid-range pile. So force is kind of the mid-range. They have um you'll notice that the grade three vanguards of force clans have 13,000 base power, and also the grade twos basically all have 10,000 base power. Whereas, for example, Axel is the offensive gift type. Therefore, while they can produce more attacks, they lose out a bit on defense. So there, for example, their base powers for grade 3s are 12,000 and then uh, and 9,000 for grade 2s. And Protect is also the same because Protect, the mechanic of Protect is more defensive, but they don't have the same base power as Force Clan. So they're also 12 and 9,000 for grade 2s. But what do the actual gifts do? So for Force, uh, we have Force 1, which is a kind of marker that basically goes to one of your circles. So, you know, you have your five rearguard circles in your vanguard circle, and you put the force one marker on a circle, and the unit that is on top of that uh, circle will gain plus 10,000 power. And this also stacks. So if you put two force ones on one circle or three force ones, then that unit on top of that circle will get plus 30,000 power during your turn. So this is only during your turn. So of course it's very strong and a lot of decks can use those force markers efficiently and it leads to more explosive attacks, more power and stuff like that. Now force two does something a bit different where force two, it's like the sideways one, says that, so it's also a marker they put on the field and it says the unit on top of this uh, marker, so on this circle, their base critical becomes two. So just like Majesty Lord Blaster, you know, the base critical turns into two. So any grade three or any unit that is on that marker will have a base critical of two. And this one cannot stack. So if you have two force twos in the same circle, the base critical will not become three. It always says becomes two. So you never want to stack it. You want to just put it on separate circles. So that is how the uh, force markers work. Now, Axel markers are an interesting one because they are the first time ever in the history of the game that they have added additional circles into the game. Because as you know, we have the five rearguard circles and the middle vanguard circle. Well, Axel says when you ride the grade three with an Axel marker, you acquire that marker and you place it as an additional front row rearguard circle. So you get a sixth rearguard circle and a third rearguard in your front row slash a fourth unit in your front row. And another thing is that every time you ride so another thing I should have not mentioned is that every time you ride one of these grade threes with a marker, you acquire the marker. So when you ride a second grade three that has Axel, then you get another front row rearguard circle and another one and another one. So as long as the game goes and you keep riding grade threes with the marker on them, you will keep acquiring Axel markers and new rearguard uh, circles in the front row. 
and then Axel 2, so Axel 1, like both Axel 1 and 2 acquire a new marker, but Axel 1 says the unit on top of that marker gains plus 10,000 power. So it's a really strong marker because you get a new circle with extra power, but of course you don't really have as many skills that draw cards, so you need to keep drawing cards to put even more units on the board than your opponent normally would if they're not playing Axel. However, Axel 2 says the unit on top of it only gains 5,000, so less power, but when you acquire the marker, you draw an extra card. So you both get a new marker and you get to draw a card when you ride your grade 3. So that's a very strong marker. It's arguably one of the best ones, actually, that people often say, because it both gets you a circle, a bit of power, and an extra card in hand. Now, Protect, very straightforward. Protect 1 is the only marker that goes to your hand, because Protect 1 says this is a Sentinel. So it's a perfect guard. So you can guard with Protect 1 from your hand, discard a card, and it's a perfect guard, there you go. Protect 2 on the other hand is much like Force, you put it on one of your circles, and then the unit on top of that circle gains plus 5,000 power and plus 10,000 shield when they intercept. So therefore, it's still a defensive one, so that, you know, with the intercept, but you do, like, lose the perfect guard that you normally would have with Protect 1. And the important thing is, is that when you ride your Great 3, and you choose whether you're gonna go for uh, for Force 1 or Force 2, Protect 1 or Protect 2, the one that you choose, you have to stick with for the rest of the game. So if you rode your Great 3, like let's say you bought the new trial decks with like Chrono Jet and Altmile, and you ride the Great 3 and you choose Force 1, you have to stay with Force 1 for that entire game. So you cannot switch them, you know, for the next time you ride the Great 3. You have to stick with that for the rest of the game. Now, another new mechanic they added to Standard, and well, the card game as a whole, just this year was Orders. So these are these like black cards that are basically like spells. And so you have Blitz Orders and Normal Orders, and basically Normal Orders go into your main deck, and they have grades, so you can only play them when you ride that certain grade. And then they have effects that, you know, give extra power to your units, draw you extra cards, search specific cards, or do something specific. But there's a bunch of different ones, and they basically work like spells in a way. So they finally added spells to Vanguard. And then Blitz Orders, for now there's only one, which is called a Quick Shield. Which is basically when you go second, um, and you, you ride your first grade one, you basically acquire that Quick Shield um, from your starter skill. Every start has the same skill of acquiring that Quick Shield, which is literally just a 5,000 shield in your hand so you just drop it to guard with it for 5000 shield or you can you know discard it for a cost or whatever you want so that might be a bit difficult to understand for people that you know there's like a spell or something in vanguard but they're pretty easy to understand they're very straightforward and with the normal orders you can only play them once per turn so keep that in mind as well now generally speaking uh all 24 clans are supported at least once per year in the game which is very nice because you can just choose one clan and play it for the whole year and then every year you will get some kind of support and new cards and then on top of that a uh, big change is that they decided that now now you have more freedom of choice in your grade ones because they have made draw triggers to be perfect guards. So now instead of draw triggers having 5,000 shield, draw triggers are perfect guards in your deck. So you can just run four draw triggers in every deck with a perfect guard with the sentinel skill and basically you don't need to take up your grade one space for those perfect guards anymore because you can run any other grade one that you want. So that's actually an amazing addition in my opinion. And of course the last thing to, to mention is that the trigger powers and shield powers have also changed. So if you used to play back in the day, you know, you'll know that like Triggers were always 10,000 shield, and then, you know, your other grades were always, like, 5,000 shield, right? For grade 1s and 2s. But now they made it so that uh, criticals and fronts, fronts is a new kind of trigger, I'll mention in a second, have 15,000 shield, heals have 20,000 shield, so it's really big, draws still have 5,000 shield, grade 1s have 10,000 shield, and grade 2s still have uh, 5,000 shield. And finally, Axel clans have a new trigger type as well, so they removed stand triggers actually, and instead they added front triggers, which basically says, when you drive check it, your front row gets plus 10,000 power, and also when you damage check it, so it's your whole front row gets plus 10,000 power, but only Axel markers, only Axel marker clans have have that uh, trigger in their arsenal. So that's basically the big changes to standard, I would say. So then for premium, um, premium, of course, I mean, a lot of people will be like familiar with at different extents. You know, some people played into Limit Break, some people played into Legion, some people played into G. So of course, then you know what Stride is and what G Guardians are and what Legion is and Limit Break is, you know, and all that stuff. But some people maybe only played for season one of Vanguard. So maybe you're not that familiar with. So I'll go over the most important uh, mechanics, and the first one is Stride. So, Strides and G Guardians are cards that they go separate from your deck. So, just like Gift Markers and and uh, Blitz Orders, those go in like a little token pile that like stays just like on top of your damage zone, so it's not in your deck, so you acquire them just from a pile. G Guardians go in the G zone, which is also a separate pile of 16 cards, and basically, 
what strides are, are basically when both players are at grade 3, you can essentially discard from your hand uh, cards that add up to grade 3, and so you discard it during your right phase, and then you select any card that you want from your G-Zone, that, you know, is a stride, so it has a red, red border on the bottom, and you can put it on top of your Vanguard, and then that unit uh, and the, the unit under it add their powers, so strides normally have 15,000 power, and then let's say your grade 3 vanguard is 12,000, so then your vanguard becomes 27,000 power, and then you can use all the effects of the stride, and then the card under it, so the grade 3 that you were on, you can no longer use its skills, unless it says something like, you know, when you would stride this unit, use the skill. But, um, so that's how strides work, they're basically, they're like, strong powerhouses that you go into for that turn and then at the end of turn they go back to the g-zone pile but face up so you have them face down normally and then after you use them they go face up and then when a g unit is face up in your g-zone that's called generation break so let's say you have one unit face up in the g-zone that's generation break one if you have three face up g units uh, in your g-zone that's generation break three so basically you have some skills that say gb1 gb3 so that's generation break then we have g guard Arguably the best mechanic ever invented in this game because it's a new defensive mechanic that they added in the middle of G and everyone was super happy about it. Because it basically means, what it, what it is, is that when your opponent attacks you, you can discard a heal trigger from your hand, so you discard it, and then choose any G Guardian from your G zone and guard with it. And then they have like really big shield so that they're like a super, like they're nice chunky defense. And on top of that, they usually have some like other effects. So for example, like the Kagero, one of the Kagero G guards says, retire the attacking unit. So you can just interrupt your opponent's plays during the middle of their turn, which adds a huge layer of interactivity. And then for example, like a great nature G guard says, oh, for every card you guarded with, you draw an extra card. So you can like draw cards for your next turn. The Grand Blue, one of the Grand Blue G guardians says, like revive a unit from your drop zone and guard with it. So you can revive a perfect shield and guard with it so so much interactivity so many cool things you can do and so those are like the main kind of mechanics of premium let's say but of course there's more like legion and limit break if you're not familiar with those i will direct you actually i'm going to mention this right now at the end of this video i'm going to talk about some content creators that i recommend to get more resources but if you want an even better understanding of the rules of the game if you've like never touched the tcg um i recommend checking out solemn vanguard's tutorial on how to play the game it's very good it's in several parts it's very in depth and at the end of it he goes through like like some demo games so i really really recommend checking it out in my opinion it's one of the really well crafted tutorials for the game so if you want even more depth on this make sure to check out solemn Vanguard's tutorial and the other cool thing with premium is that if you're a zero player what you can do is you can basically just like build your deck from zero irl you know buy some cards from from online and then you can just like slowly upgrade it like pick up strides g guards like other cards that have come out ever since and you have your own unique deck and you can like play with your friends like this too so you can like make your zero decks and then try to upgrade them with some of the new cards and then see how it goes. I think that could be a really fun way for zero players to get into the TCG as well. But just keep in mind that all the old cards you're playing with in zero, they're technically part of premium, not standard, but a lot of the units like, you know, Dragonic Kaiser Vermilion and Blonde Azel and all of those, you know, they've been remade in zero in, in the standard format to be like a modern counterpart. So like to have modern standards for skills, basically. So kind of to keep up with the power level of the game. All right. So now we've been spinning, spending quite a bit of time talking about the mechanics and the rules. What we're going to do now is we're going to talk about the best products for you to buy. And boy oh boy there has never been a better time than right now because we just had the release of three amazing trial decks into the game which are the chronojet Ultmile and Asha trial decks. Now, I did an opening for these three trial decks on my channel already if you want to see the contents of them, but what's amazing about the trial decks these days is that unlike back in the day, trial decks come with four perfect guards and you only need to buy one trial deck to have four of everything. Remember when you had to buy like the Aichi trial deck just to get four blaster, like you had to buy four of the trial decks to get four blaster blades because they only put one blaster blade per trial deck? None of that anymore. Like if you buy a modern Royal Paladin trial deck, you'll get four blaster blades, no questions asked. And so, these new trial decks that just came out, the Asha, Chronojet, and Ultmile ones, those are amazing. Like, they're really good trial decks to get started into the game. And then, after you've played with those trial decks, let's say you got some friends together, you know, from your high school or from your university or work or wherever, you got some friends together, you bought the trial decks, you tried out the game, and you're having a lot of fun, so you're like, okay, we want to update these trial decks. 
you buy some boxes of the next stage. So the next stage is the 14th extra booster uh, since the reboot. And basically this set has direct support for those three trial decks to make them full competitive decks. And they're all really strong decks. They're super good. You can basically finish the whole deck just from this set. If you want to make it a little bit better, you can basically pick up some older cards as well. But trust me, you can just buy the next stage and have an amazing finish deck um, that you can play with in competitive tournaments as well, which is super, super cool. And generally, every extra booster box comes with like one VR, which is a new rarity. It's called Vanguard Rare. So a lot of the like the trump cards are usually vanguard rare and then uh two triple rares and four double rares and then the rest is just like rares in common so pretty nice they usually go for about 40 bucks a pop for per box so it's good to like let's say you're a gear chronicle player and then you know your friend played with the alt mild the royal paladin trial deck and your friend played with the asha neo nectar one so you just buy like i don't know five boxes together and just split the pools together and just build what you can it's, it's really really fun and a good way to get into the game right now now if Either you can wait until October or you're watching this a bit later because I'm posting this in July of 2020. So if, let's say, you're in September or in October, we will have the release of the Majesty Lord Blaster Special Series. So finally, Majesty Lord Blaster is being remade in Standard, and this will be a phenomenal product. This will be the best product ever made in Vanguard, I've said it, you know, because this set goes for about 60 or 65 bucks, so it's a little bit on the pricier end, you know, trial decks go for like 15 or 18 USD retail, but, so the Majesty Lord Blaster set, it goes for a bit more, but it comes with everything. It is a finished, competitive deck out of the box. All you can upgrade it with is one of the cards from the Ultimate Trial deck, that's it, you know, it, and it's a great two, like, it's super easy to get, but... The Majesty Lord Blaster set comes with a finished competitive deck that is one of the best competitive decks as well. On top of that, it comes with a really nice leather deck box and a pack of sleeves as well to protect your cards. And it's just amazing. 10 out of 10 product. Really, really, really good quality. Just uh, like absurdly good and super good like bang for your buck. It's crazy. Like you cannot get such an amazing finished competitive deck for such a low price. It's really, really good. Now, if you want to build other clans, like let's say you're really like Narukami or Dimension Police or Nova Grappler or like, I don't know, Oracle Think Tank, you still, of course, can build them, but not everything has a trial deck for it. But using online resources, you know, whether it's like websites or YouTube channels or like the official website, you can find deck lists for those clans. We're going to go over some of those resources. And then they're releasing in August uh, 2020, they're releasing something called the Festival Collection, which is basically a set with reprints for some of the core cards for all 24 clans, as well as the draw trigger perfect guards being reprinted for every single clan as well. So that will be your chance to get perfect guards for your favorite clan, pick up the most important, some of the best cards that you can use in your arsenal for that specific clan, as well as like all the starters are also reprinted in case you need to pick that up as well. So it's a great product for returning players or new players that want to get into one of the, like anything in the game really, because all draw perfect cards are being reprinted in that set, which is really, really amazing. And now if you want to, let's say, you know, as I said, you know, build up your zero decks or just get into premium immediately because you love the sound of premium, there's going to be a set called Premium Collection 2020 coming out on that exact same day uh, in uh, on the first week of August, which will basically have uh, the strides, as we talked about strides earlier, it'll have one stride for every single clan, which you can just pop right into your deck as well as like other really cool cards that you can use so make sure to pick that up as well if you want to get into premium right off the bat so now we're going to talk about resources or so resources of all kinds and sorts so first things first is of course a card game is you know card games are one-to-one -one games they need a community you need friends to play them but if what if you don't your friends don't want to get into it you know or like they they play something else already or they just don't want to play a card game or something well you're going to need to find a card shop and where is the best place to find a card shop well actually the official website the official website has card shops listed for like any country that supports Vanguard and any shop that supports Vanguard will be listed on it. So you can just go to the website, go to the country you live in or the state you live in and just like look around your area, look where the closest shop is. You know, if it's like a 30 or 40 minute drive, I would still really suggest you go there. My card shop is a 40 minute drive away. So, you know, I still go there all the time, but it's really good because local communities will really make you appreciate the game a lot more and will help you improve so much more as well. There'll be some strong players in there. There'll be some more casual players in there but it's going to be a great atmosphere so i really recommend going to your local card store and finding it on the official website and checking it out but what if you can't actually find any uh local card card stores in your area well then i recommend joining um there is a facebook group especially if you're in the united states i recommend joining a facebook group called vanguardians where you can actually ask like oh you know i live in this area but i can't find any shops on the official website is there anyone that plays vanguard in this area you know and stuff like that and then 
people will usually go like, oh, actually, we do have a store where we play at, you know, and stuff like that. In Europe, we have a European Card 5 Vanguard uh, Facebook page, I mean, Facebook group, sorry, not page. And then uh, for, like, Southeast Asia, there is... Um, uh, Vanguards, as well as uh, Card Gamers Discussion Group, so CDG, where you can also check out and ask, okay, you know, I live in this and this area, but I can't find any shops. Can somebody, like, you know, tell me where I can go to play Vanguard? So there's a lot of places where you can find people. And also just, I mean, ask on Twitter. Hell, you can sometimes hop into one of my streams and be like, hey, I'm from this area, but I don't really find any Vanguard scene. And maybe there'll be somebody else in that chat, you know, that's like, oh, actually, we play here and there. And that's actually happened plenty of times. And keep in mind that even if you have a trial deck, I really recommend to join the tournaments. Like, when I first started going to my local card store i joined with a trial deck and i yeah sure i got my ass beat but i still had a good time and i learned and then the local players they taught me how to get better they gave me cards you know they told me which cards to pick up from my deck to improve it and then we like you know you grow together as a community so a lot of the existing players they help me get better and trust me even if you come in with a trial deck you're gonna get a lot of help and like most communities will be really, really willing to help out. And I'm saying this also to existing TCG players. When you get new players that come in, especially if you see them just like playing Zero on their phone, just help them out. Just let help them out. If you see they're clearly playing with a trial deck, help them out and like show them the ropes and, you know, help them improve as well. And trust me, you're going to have a much happier community with new players like that. So I think it's going to be very, very great. Now, where to buy cards now that you found your community? So, of course, the best place to buy your cards, of course, is your local game store. So, if you find that card shop, you should buy packs and, you know, open packs together with your community and stuff like that. Maybe you have a vendor in the shop as well that sells single cards. And so, there's always the argument of, like, should you buy packs or should you open, you know, or should you buy single cards, you know, specific cards that you need to finish your deck. Generally, like... To support your store, it's good to open packs, but to finish your decks, it's always cheaper to buy singles. Try to buy singles from people within your local community if you can, but if you need to buy them online, like for example, I need to buy them online, there's a lot of different good avenues to do that. So I'm going to list some places where you can actually buy cards. So first things first, there are two different online, like, card selling and trading and buying platforms in both Europe and the US. And you can actually check out my referral links to both of them in the description and the, the pinned comment. And so when you want to do your shopping for your cards on those websites, make sure you use that referral link. But <clears throat> in the US, the website is called TCG Player, where you can basically search for any card you want. And if it's somebody selling it, you can buy it. You can also sell it yourself. So basically, it's really easy. You just look for specific cards and buy them. Also, if you're a collector, this is a great way to find cards too. Now, in Europe, we have Card Market. And so on Card Market, you can do the exact same. Look for any card, you know, and buy it. Or, like, sell any card and buy it. And for Card Market, I've done tutorials, actually, on how to buy cards and sell cards most efficiently. So just, you know, I think I'll put that in, this, in the description, you know, how to do that. I'll just put... I'll make videos about that, so you can check those out if you need them. So those places are really, really, really good. I really recommend them for the US and for... Uh, the states because there you see like both shops selling stuff and individuals selling stuff like i myself sell my cards and card market as well but there are also a lot of different shops like online shops where you can buy cards as well depending on region now i'm going to list some of them this isn't a finished list if you have some good recommendations you can leave them in the comments as well you know if i didn't list one of them but for example for singapore one of the nice places is killer cards that they also you know they're from singapore but they ship internationally then we have ideal 808 for north america uh, they sell, you know, single cards, they sell play sets, I'll talk about that a bit later. And then there's also Groove Distribution, or Groove Dis in the States, which is also a really nice shop. Then on top of that, in um, uh, Australia, you have WCC, definitely want to check them out as well if you're in, in Australia. Or Oce I think they shipped in New Zealand as well, so th there's that too. And then in Europe, we have uh, Claret Cards, which is actually run by fellow YouTuber Solemn Vanguard. Then we also have Mao Cards, which is a Austrian-based website. Uh, Cards Capital is a French-based website, and actually all the card scans in English that have ever appeared in the card game's history come from Cards Capital. Then there's also uh, Carte Jouer, which is like another French website. Then Ventura Games, Ventura, is a really good Portuguese-based website that also sells both cards and playsets, which is very nice. And I think that is actually it for my, like, bare, bare list, you know. So, uh, Cards Capital, Mao, uh, Carta Jouet, Claret Cards, and Ventura are all European-based, so, but just based in different parts of Europe. So maybe you're closer to one of those countries so you can, like, save on shipping costs and stuff like that. But quite a few of them offer free shipping as well, or some kind of discounts. Um, so, those are... Um, where you can get single cards. Now, if you want to get play sets, so what play sets are is before a new set comes out, uh, some shops will sell, basically offer you to get 
four of every card for a clan. So for example, let's look at next stage here, the next stage. This set comes with support for Gear Chronicle, uh, Royal Paladin, and New Nectar. So let's say you don't want to open packs because you're only interested in Gear Chronicle. So what you're going to do is you can go to a website like Claret Cards in Europe or Ideal808 in America and buy just the Gear Chronicle playset. So you just get four of every Gear Chronicle card from the set and that's it and nothing else. So you buy the trial deck, you buy the playset of Gear Chronicle, you're done. You know, you're finished. That's all you needed to buy. And so you have a finished competitive deck and you didn't need to open packs, you know, and kind of like hope for luck that you pulled good stuff. But of course, you know, then you don't get the joy of opening packs, but you do get to finish your deck most easily. And I always buy playsets. I always pre-order playsets, um, specifically from Claret Cards, actually, because, I mean, it's run by one of my good friends, so I want to support his business as well. And so, basically, I, I really recommend that. So, playsets are always good, but, you know, only commit to them if you're sure that you want to build that clan in the future, because it's always on a pre-order basis. And then if you want to know what products are coming out in the future, the release schedule is on the website, I'll put it in the description, and you can also always find, like, like on the official Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, they always post like upcoming products, so you can always check what's coming out in the future, and whether your favorite client is being supported anytime soon or not. Now, finally, the last point is, where do you find the good deck lists, you know? Uh, normally, it's very easy, because normally we have a lot of events going on, so you always get have, like, events and, like, the, the winning deck lists from each event, but now, thanks to COVID-19, we're actually going through this period where there's not many events because, I mean, of social distancing and, you know, staying home and everything, and, like, our World Championship has been cancelled for this year because of COVID-19, and so there aren't as many results, but normally, uh, you will find the best deck lists on the official website, they're always like listed by event, but now during the specific period, you'll find most of your uh, deck lists on uh, several websites as well as the YouTube. You know, a lot of us YouTubers, we cover the best deck lists, and you know, also Twitter is an amazing place, mostly for Japanese players especially, but I recommend anyone that like, if you win your shop tournament, just post your deck list, you know, and stuff like that, because it's very easy to find them. Like, they have a hashtag called, like, Vanga do Yusho Deki. I made a video, actually, on how to find lists, how to find the top, the best uh, deck lists, so I'll link that video in the description as well. But generally, on Twitter, it's really easy to find. There is some websites, like Dex Anders blog, as well as the World Class Card Fighters WCC website, where they cover the topping tournament decks, as well as, of course, on YouTube, there's plenty of people covering the best uh, deck lists. Now, I use to do this quite a lot, um, but with Zero I've kind of toned it down, but I'll be coming back to that very much now, actually. But there's some really good YouTubers for you to check out as well, that not only cover the winning deck lists, but also give you in-depth guides about a lot of the upcoming decks and clans, and so there's a lot of amazing resources to be found on YouTube. Another website that I'm not sure if they post as much on their blog as much, uh, which is Vision, you want to check them out as well. They host a lot of tournaments online right now, so like because our World Championship is cancelled, Vision is coming in, like they're stepping in to host a lot of tournaments, so I'll leave a link in the description to that as well. I really have to make sure I don't forget anything in the description of this video, <laughs> but uh, some of the amazing YouTubers that you can watch. And I, like I said, I previously said uh, Solomon Vanguard's tutorial is amazing. He's more premium oriented, but he always talks about like new card reveals and stuff like that, but his premium content is very, very good. Then if you want someone amazing for standard and for the general card game, one of my best friends, um, Can You Say G, he hosts a channel called G Station, where he goes in depth on like a bunch of decks. He looks at like which decks are winning. He has a lot of interesting talking points. Basically what I've been doing on YouTube for all these years, but with zero, I've kind of like shifted away from it a bit, but I'm kind of going back to it now as well. So G Station is like one of my biggest recommendations. He's putting in a lot of work right now, amazing videos, amazing quality, like just he's a really smart guy, he says a lot of very good things, and you can also follow him on Twitter at CanYouSayG to see more resources on his Twitter as well. He retweets a lot of the winning deck lists and stuff like that, so very very good resource for that. So definitely want to check him out. On top of that, you want to um, watch World Class Card Fighters, an amazing channel that covers things about standard, things about premium, whether it's deck lists or strategies or topping decks or tournaments or anything. They really do cover a lot and their channel is amazing. It's run by Kai, one of my fellow like co-commentators for the World Championship and like a good friend of mine as well. So you definitely want to check them out. And I mean, I myself also post quite a lot for the actual card game. So you'll be seeing a lot, especially starting now, you'll be seeing a lot more of the regular TCG content coming in. You've been seeing stuff already like the Bladliner uh, deck profile and all that random stuff, but there's more to come, you know, and more of what I used to do pre-Zero's launch, uh, especially. So, uh, there's many, 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 many more, 
This video is already going really long, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about just like YouTubers. I think I'm planning to make a separate video just talking about like other Vanguard YouTubers that you should watch. But for now, that's like the bare bones list of who you really, really must, 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 must watch. Like people I really, really recommend. So yeah, that basically covers everything I wanted to talk about. This video is really, really long, but I really had a lot to talk about. You know, the game rules, the resources, where to find your locals, where to buy cards, you know, who to watch, where to listen, you know, all that stuff in this video. Oh, also, Nexus Corp is another good channel, I, I should mention. They could do good gameplay and they're funny people, so check that out. But, okay, now we're truly, truly done, um, but, oof. God, this was a lot. But I hope that this helped you guys. I hope that the zero players that have been wanting to get into the trading card game, I hope this helped clear things up for you. Honestly, the best way to learn. The rules may seem a little bit daunting right now. You know, there's like, oh my god, there's so many mechanics and everything and, and premium and standard and all this stuff. Just try it. Just play it. There's, It's so much easier if you just get into it. You'll notice that it's actually not that complex at all, you know, to get into, and you're gonna have so much fun. I'm also planning, I've been juggling with the idea of doing teaching streams, so I do stream on a regular basis, and maybe at some points we'll do like a tabletop simulator, like, you know, uh, tutorial stream where we like take some of the viewers that have tabletop simulator and like teach them the regular you know standard vanguard you know how to play it and how to get into it so we might do stuff like that and in general you can expect more trading card game content from me as well it feels weird to say that because you know i've been doing vanguard tcg is my main focus for the last six years that i've done this channel but it's just been recently that we've been really focusing on zero but that is going to kind of shift down a little bit because the TCG is my main passion, my main thing that pushes this channel, you know, for all these years and my main motivation. So there's going to be a lot more of that to come. So if you got into the TCG thanks to this, or if you're considering it now and you're going to look at all those resources, then welcome aboard. You're playing arguably one of the best card games ever made and honestly the most adrenaline filled card game I can imagine. So welcome aboard. Thank you so much for joining us. But on that note, that's going to be it for me today and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.